Welcome back, and we're going to join this morning, Dr. Bob Hartman. Good morning, Cam. Always a pleasure to be here at TSPN. A pleasure to have you. And you brought Janine along with you. Janine's a uh, fourth year medical student. Fourth year medical yes. student. Tell at us about UC that. Davis. UC Davis. Um, yes, wonderful. I'm very interested in primary care. Uh, Dr. Hartman is an amazing doctor, and he's gracious enough to allow me to come here up here for a month and just. Um, um, Remember why I love rural areas and yeah. rural primary care. So great, great. Love to be here. Thank you, Bob. Uh, back to school. Kids are all getting together. Is does that does that s spread viruses or does it does it does it? I mean, kids get yeah. together. They're sick. Does it? Cam, you know, we've done studies on that, looking at the rate of illness absence in schools, and when there's a break, shoop, the illness absence rate goes down. Yeah, certainly. You know, crowded conditions, uh, particularly the younger kids, uh, not uh, washing their hands, coughing, sneezing under their hands, spreading germs. Uh, so, so we do see that a lot, and that's why it's important to be prepared heading into school. Okay. So, uh, is there there certain uh, checkups, or is there a checklist, or well, what should I, parents be looking for? First of all, parents should really be focusing on getting your kids ready for school. And there are multiple aspects of that, but one of them is the physical aspect of it. So it's a good idea to check in with your health care provider and, very importantly, look over the immunization list. There are requirements heading into kindergarten, requirements heading into seventh grade, but it's really important to protect your kids, your family, your community by making sure that your, your child uh, heading into school is up to date on their immunizations. Unfortunately, in California and other states, the exemption rate has gone up fairly significantly. Part of that is convenience. You know, it's hard to get to the clinics, hard to get to the health care providers' offices, and so parents will claim an exemption from getting immunizations. Part of it is medical. They're, they're about less, a little bit less than 1% of people have good legitimate medical reasons not to get immunizations, but a lot of it is this uh, belief that immunizations cause harm, and they don't. Immu they, they can cause some reactions occasionally. Rarely there are significant side effects from them. But overall, the benefit to the child, the benefit to the community is tremendous. The, the number of illnesses and deaths that are prevented by vaccines far outweigh any complications from them. I believe I think last year was the first year I didn't get the flu shot and also uh -uh. the last year that I'll forget, not forget, <laughs> because it was, yeah. No, and I'd be more than happy to come back maybe next month as we start to get ready for flu season. Yes, and we will, we will bring in and talk about that. Yeah. Uh, Janine, uh, UC Davis, you said. Mm -hmm. And uh, how many more years do you have before you can... Uh... So um, I get my MD in May. Okay. And then, um, you know, as a, as a physician, we, we go through a rigorous training process, anywhere from three to seven or so years. Um, primary care is usually about three, so we have an internship and years, a couple years of residency. So. Great. Um, so she'll be ready to hang out her shingle in about four years. There you go. <laughs> we'll be making you a sign here soon. <laughs> uh, so let's go down the, uh, the list again. Uh, healthy food choices. A lot of that is um, waking up in the morning. That first meal, important? The first meal is very important. We all know that kids do much better when they, they enjoy a healthy, well-balanced meal in the morning. I know some kids eat meals at school, um, and so, you know, they're taken care of, but you know, overall, if parents can encourage children to eat more fruits and vegetables, and part of the way to do that is actually to cook with your child. Studies show that kids who actually prepare food, grow food, are much more likely to eat it and enjoy it, right. and that reduces childhood obesity and the myriad diseases associated with that. So. Right, and that's one of those things that if you can start at the at the younger age, you know, yes. like you say, you move on into it to being a healthy adult. Right, yeah. when the yeah. palate is being formed. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, here you have something about uh, kids playing sports at school. Um, physicals, uh, how does that work? Physical activity is very important. Uh, the, you know, no matter what the activity is, as Janine and I were talking on the way in here, we were talking about uh, screen time and getting your children out and away from the computer, away from the television set. And that includes Organized sports activities, it includes unorganized play activities that are very important for the kids. Uh, you mentioned sports physicals. We're doing some catch up a uh, week from Janine and I'll be at Amador High doing catch up sports physicals, 3.30 Thursday afternoon. Okay. Uh, so we've already done several hundred. <laughs> but we've got a few more. And you do it at a uh, it's really a reduced rate, right? Very, very reduced rate. Uh, the 
athletic departments and schools request a $20 donation, and they're volunteers that come in and, and do the uh, physicals. So we'll be doing that again next Thursday afternoon at Amador High uh, in the, I think we're going to be in the cross country room, 3.30 uh, in the afternoon. And anybody from the county is welcome. To anybody that. from the county is welcome. It's not just amateur students. One helpful tip in terms of limiting screen time, because it can cause, you know, problems, <laughs> is like to watch television. They like to be in front of the video games. But um, parents can early in the week set up a schedule with their kids of the child one to two hours, and the child can use that however they see fit. And when they're, you know, not watching television or on the computer, encourage them to go outside and play or come in and make some healthy meals. And it's a, uh, that's definitely a, a situation. I have a, a son that's 17, mm -hmm. 18 in December, and my girlfriend has uh, 10 and 11 year old boys. And yeah. All ages of, of kids seem to like yeah. the screen. Yeah. yeah. Dif difficult to get kids away right from that. Visit. But also, <laughs> also, you know, what, what parents and guardians are doing, getting, getting kids outside, you know, engaged in activities. I mean, we live in an incredibly beautiful place. Right. Much rather be outdoors than in front of a screen. Great. Bob, thanks for coming in. Thank you very much. Always thanks a for, pleasure. Thanks for bringing in Janine. And, Thank you uh, so much. It's gorgeous good, here. Good, it. Yeah, good luck in your uh, future in the medical field. Thank you. Great. We're going to uh, run to an ad break. We'll be right back after these messages. You're watching Amador County's number one news and sports leader, PSPN.